Hmm, get a tragic here, and welcome to my new updated version of my Mage Knight mod. Now, I just want to go straight into the features, but if you hang around at the end of the video, I'll talk about why this mod is existing. And uh, But let's get straight into how to use it, and some tips and tricks on how to use it. For starters, now to select your Mage Knight, you just pick up the one you want and drop it on the pad very simple. If you uh, want to do random, you can uh, just chuck it into this little box here, shuffle it and pull out. And if there's someone you don't want in there, like you don't want those two guys in there, just, you know, don't put them in the box. And so you just pull them out and you've got your random mage knights. In addition, over here, you've got uh, your Pug selection. Now, by default, of course, it's got Core and Lost Legion, which is, you know, the designer recommended way to play. Uh, but if you want to turn off Lost Legion or turn on Shades of Tesla, you can. I'm just going to leave it default. And also, just like before, we've got our setup bags here, like our rules bags. And if you click on Quick Scenario, you have these little condensed scenario rules. So if I wanted to do full conquest, we now have this cool little, the, the map builder is now movable. So I can just stick it here and I go four players. So that's 11 tiles. It's four cities. It is three cores. And then I just hit build map pool and it creates the pool, right? Also, uh, if I just, reload quickly uh, if you let me just quickly reload if you are doing a quest that requires some kind of manual setup of the map pool you can do it manually through here so basically you have the core tile shuffler and you have the country uh, tile shuffler then you've got the three map pools. You've also got down here the little, uh, you know, core tile that has Volcare's camp if you want to use that instead of a city. So say I want to play Dungeon Lords. So Dungeon Lords, if we come up here, is a somewhere around here. It's one of my favorites. I play this all the time. Uh, Dungeon Lords requires for four players one blue city and three core tiles. So say I want to play a little version of Dungeon Lords. So I'll, if you right click on these bags is the best way to use them. Let's pull out the blue city. We're just going to, for the fun of it, also use Volcare's Camp. So I'm going to put Volcare's Camp in. And in Dungeon Lords, you have to use all the tiles that have the, uh, the tombs. So I'm just going to pull out all the core city tombs, which just happens to be one. And I'm going to chuck that in like so. And I'm getting into these bags by just right clicking on them. If you go right click search, you can get in them without having to screw around trying to drop things into place. We also need to get the two uh, dungeon tiles for the countryside tiles. There's only two. Uh, there they are. So right click on the shuffler, search, and just drag it in, and we're ready to go. Now, uh, then we just use the map builder. So competitive is, competitive Dungeon Lords is what, 11 countryside tiles, but we've already got two. So that is nine. We have one blue city tile, but we're playing a bit of a variant, so we chucked in a second city. So just leave them as zero. And we need three core tiles, but remember we already have one because of the dungeon, so let's just put in two. And now we just go build map pool, and it creates the map pool for us. Also, we have just this little selector just to sort of set some game parameters. 
uh, basically you've got your competitive spells here and you've got this deck here is all the cards that you have to remove if you're playing the first reconnaissance uh, tutorial quest. So that is off by default, but you can just turn that on. We can turn competitive mode on and that will remove, that will add this deck. If you have it off, it'll turn, we'll get rid of it. So we've got competitive mode on and reconnaissance off, which means both these decks are going to be added to the pool. And also, I'm just going to turn on Blitz just for the hell of it, because I like to play Blitz. There's also this button that says Volcare. Now, these are just to modify the unit offer. Because when you have Blitz and Volcare, you get extra units. Okay, so I'm ready to go. So I just hit the Start Game now. And it'll take the... It'll do the decks. It takes the pugs that we're going to be using. And it just sets it up. Now you can see one of the big differences in the new mod is the mana roller. Uh, now I've got these huge big fat dice that are very easy to see and you roll them by just dropping them into the mana roller and it rolls them. And you'll see that kind of scales them small and then, uh, you know, rolls them and moves them. And that's because Tabletop Simulator uses the Unity... Uh, you know, physics engine or whatever. And like any kind of physics engine, it's designed to be real world in inverted commas. So it works a lot better with certain values. And what that means is if you have dice that are scaled really large or scaled to strange shapes, they just don't roll as well. You really need dice and tabletop simulator to be scale one, one, one. Otherwise the physics just don't function correctly. So the mana roller now uh, scales them to 111 and then does a really nice good roll and then scales them up nice and big so they're easy to use by the players. Puts it down the front here which I quite like. Also you'll note that the player boards, the cooperative and the competitive skills are always placed out and this is because, and I'll get to this when I talk about the end of the video, there's an extremely good mod already for Mage Knight which is heavily scripted. So I wanted to make my new version of my mod very friendly for people running their own custom scenarios and there's a lot of custom scenarios where you have to make decisions about these skills for example i often play a variant called backstabbers which is kind of like a mix between competitive and cooperative where you can form alliances and you can break alliances and stuff like that and that one requires both competitive and co-op skills to be active. So the point is they're both out at the start. So whatever you want to do, just chuck out the one you don't want or both of them and drop the other one in the skill pile. And that's pretty much that. What else? Basically the, 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 the hand zones are the same as before, draw to five, uh, you know, and you, you, you can change these numbers. These numbers now save, which is good. So if you save the game and reload it, it'll remember. And also these are not dependent on player color. They're just dependent on uh, location. And that's important because when I play with other humans, you know, when I play multiplayer, I like to go in and actually change the hand zones to match the color. So like Etheria is red, right? So let's make, uh, let's make uh, her color red. We'll make this guy turquoise. Well, let's, let's make him green actually. So we'll make this guy purple, this guy turquoise, and this guy green. And this is just so you can when you have multiple players, if you look at the top right hand corner, it just says tragic. But when you have multiple players, there'll be a list of them down here. And if their colors match the Mage Knights, it just makes it a lot easier. But these buttons uh, don't care about the colors. They'll still work regardless. Talking about the, the hands, if this is a function of Tabletop Simulator, not of my mod, but if you want to see the hands, like you're playing multi-hand solo, just go to hands and click disable and they'll be visible. 
Any more little tricks? Oh yeah, over here we have the slide buttons. These just redo the offers. So, you know, if you've used a couple of these cards, they'll, you know, fix them all up. You've got the build new offer that you run at the end of the turn. And there's a little button here that says include gold unit. So you can turn that on and it'll, you know, just do the same thing, except it'll use the gold units. Also, you've got your monasteries up here. Just grab your monastery and dump it down here when you need to, and it adds more cards. So if I add two monasteries, it's fine. If I hit build offer, it does it. Say I burn a monastery down, I just pull it out, drop it back where it came from, and next time it'll build one. So that's all very well and good. That's pretty much most of the mod features. The big changes really are the mana roller. So the, the player boards are set up now that player cards will automatically lose all their snap points. So you no longer have to worry about your cards snapping and you, you can just have a lot of freedom to place them anywhere you want. Uh, you've got your wounds in here. You've got your dice. And cleanup now is a lot easier. So say we fought a couple of monsters. Cleanup is nice and easy now. As in, you just drag select. Oops. You just drag select and just drop it into the roller. And boom. It rolls the dice. It sends the objects back to the the discard piles and it puts everything in here. You'll note that the, the quick cleanup by dragging to the roller has placed the wounds into your discard pile. So to actually get rid of wounds, you can either hit the delete button or just pick them up and drop them in the trash can and they'll go away. Now, I've uh, the these token piles sort of get smaller as you take it to sort of simulate token stacks, see how they get smaller when you're, you know, as you take things out of them, which is kind of cool. And I'm particularly happy with this, but if we look at these things here, you can see that these discard piles, they display the last object placed in. So if I pull that one out, you can see that it's changed and it shows me the next one. And that's just a way to quickly, you know, see what's going on. Because often when you when you pass a thing, you come up to here and you need to check it out and find out how much fame you're getting and stuff. There's also these return buttons and all these things. So these are going to return to where they came from. These buttons will only work if the source deck is empty. The source bag's empty. Uh... What else? What else? Oh, yeah. Uh, basically, if you have taken your cards, it doesn't really matter where they are on the table, but if you've taken your day cards, when you hit the, the turn to night, it'll pull these in and reshuffle this deck. So you don't have to worry about resetting up those, those uh, you know, manually pulling all those things out now. Uh, it doesn't automatically reset the board here because there's a lot of custom scenarios have all these different things that happen at the end of turn. So I've left that to be manually done. Uh, there's another button up here which says, uh, let's just get rid of these. There's another button up here that says tooltips are off. You can click this and it will turn them on. Now what tooltips do is it just means that the tokens now have tooltips, which is a uh, pretty cool. So when they're face down, it just gives you the generic name for them, right? But when you flip them over, it now says their actual names. So that's that. I don't really like tooltips because it's I like looking at the images, kind of like on a board game. But if you're a player that likes to play zoomed out, the tooltips are very, very ha handy. Defeat three monsters, three orcs in this case, and you get a uh, reward. Or the werewolf, he has attack seven, he has fast, he has armor, and he has fame. 
So those things, and remember when they're face down, it, it's hidden. Yeah, and you can turn them on and off by just clicking this button. So now all the tooltips are off. Okay, and that is pretty much it. Uh, oh, actually, there is one more thing. Uh, if I just upload uh, load up the thing again. Uh, one thing I also forgot is, uh, say you're playing co-op. So we've got player two player co-op. We'll grab my favorite mage knights. Uh, we need a dummy player, right? So you can just drag a dummy player out of this area here. You can place it anywhere you like. It doesn't matter where you put it. So I'm gonna put it here, or I often put it up here. Just like it really doesn't matter. Let's put it up here. And then you just click the button, random mage knight, and it pulls out a mage knight. So whatever mage knight card is visible at the top of the deck is the one that is going to be chosen. So you can right click on the deck and just drag whatever mage knight you want to the bottom. So say I want to play with Krang as the dummy, I can just drag it down, put some at the top. Or, you know, if you wanted, you can just place the card there by itself. But anyway, once you have the Mage Knight you want, just hit Choose Dummy Mage Knight, and it builds the Mage Knight thing. This is one of the big requests from my old mod, is to put turn buttons here. So if you hit Process Dummy Turn, it'll just draw the three cards. You have a white, there is no whites. So another white, another white, red. So it's drawn a red, so get one red. As you know, Tuvok is, I always say Tuvok from Voyager, but as you know, Tovac is one of the best dummy players because, uh, you know, there is not a lot of blue in the base deck. Anyway, uh, yeah, so because we're playing with the dummy, right, if I have competitive mode off and I start the game, it'll uh, just delete the competitive spells, not add them. Okay, I think that is pretty much everything. Oh yeah, uh, the dummy card always goes into the fifth spot and the, the, the tokens here are randomized and then dealt in order one to four. And that is to determine the order for tactic selection in the first turn. So then we select our tactics, he got six, he got three, which means that the, for the first round, it'd be like this and the dummy got two actually. So it'd be, uh, first round it'd be like this, wouldn't it? Actually the dummy got two. I do know how to count to six, but the point is that the dummies always, uh, during setup, the dummies always placed in six and the uh, mage knights are randomized into the order one to four. And that is pretty much it. Actually, there is one more thing. Let me just quickly start up a new game. Let's, uh, quickly just do something random. Uh, remember I told you that the cards from your hands, uh, they automatically lose all their snap points so you can place them really easily. And it's not quite the same for everything. Like basically over here we have the, okay, there's one and there's one. Okay, so the, in the artifact deck, uh, the artifacts, the normal artifacts, you know, they, they don't snap, but the uh, banners, they do. They snap to a little spot down here, and so do all the units. So the units all snap. So if I'm doing a unit, I just place it there like that, and if I'm doing a banner, I just drop it on top of it. Now, there's a function in uh, Mage Knight where if I just highlight an object and press the U button for under, it'll just slide it under. 
and then I can just go L for lock and that's nice and set up and ready to go. And there's more stuff sort of like that. Uh, oh, you know, I think I also forgot to talk about this. Uh, I'm also using my new uh, puzzle concept for making tiles. So they interlock very nicely like a puzzle. So that, that little U trick works for a lot of things. Like say you're placing a control marker. You can just press U to put it underneath the token. You know what I mean? Or say you've got two people standing on top of each other. And just highlight one, press U, and you can get to the other guy. That's not part of my mod. That's just how to use Tabletop Simulator. Also, I have got... Uh, I have got non-sticky turned on, so you can actually just pick up the objects without disturbing the things on top of them anyway. But I just wanted to, to put that through. I'm pretty sure that is actually the end. I think that's all the functions of the mod. Now I've tested the mod pretty extensively, but you know, there's always bugs in a new mod, so I'm not gonna remove my old mod. Now I'm gonna just release this as version two. And uh, I haven't really tested the Lost Legion components yet. I mean, they're all in there, so it shouldn't be any issue to play Lost Legion. But you can definitely play the all of Core and all of Tesla really fine. Like with the Tesla, if you are playing on level uh, 10, just type in 10 and it sets the, the, the thing to 10. And same with the city level. So if I'm playing with a level five city, boom there you go uh also there's this little shuffler here this is something pretty cool so say i'm playing on a level five city right a level five blue city i want to fight that requires two purples and uh white so you can dump the purples and the white into the city shuffler and then bring that down to the mage knight that's playing And then you can do the random shuffles to, you know, for co-op attacks or whatever. That's just a little tool that makes life a bit easier. And I'm pretty sure that's it. Uh, I hope you like it. Now, just before I go, I just want to say why I invented this. Uh, if you look at the description for this mod, there'll be a link to another mod called the Mage Knight highly scripted. I mean, it's just that it is all automated. Uh, actually, I'll just load it up and show you. Uh, it's a very, very good mod. And he, it was sort of like, he sort of took over the Mage Knight when I stopped making my Mage Knight mod. And he's completely automated everything. So say I wanted to play Dungeon Lords in his version, I just click on Dungeon Lords I want to use Lost Legion and Shades of Tesla. I want to add the dwarf to the random pool. And let's go four randoms like so. And I just hit start, boom. And that sets the whole thing up, okay? Now, I'm not very good at using this mod which is part of the reasons I made my own mod. It's so scripted, it requires you to behave in a very certain way to play. Now, when you get used to it, I'm sure it's fine. It's just not really my style. So for example, if you want to play solo, you got to be the gray player, I believe. You can hit your claim cards. And uh, like I said, the whole mod just is all automated. Like for example, if I explore a location it'll just draw out the tokens for you right uh, you've got the turn thing and the, it handles ends of rounds it handles everything automatically it's an extremely good mod uh, the thing is it doesn't fit my design philosophy for mage for not for mage like for tabletop simulator I like my tabletop simulator mods and there's a number of massively scripted mods. There's like, you know, the Kingdom Death Monster one, there's that Arkham Horror LCG one. There's a lot of these mods that are just so scripted, it's insane. And they're basically just computer games that have 
slightly clunky interfaces. I mean, the interfaces are getting better, but they're basically computer games. The thing I like about Tabletop Simulator is that it replicates the board game experience. I feel like I'm playing a board game. You're manually moving things around, and I like that. I mean, it's a fine line. I mean, obviously, I've got lots of automation in my mods as well, but I just think uh, it's one of those things where I much prefer just a little less scripting. And I, I think one of the big things is, especially for games like Mage Knight that allow people to play their own variants. Like we actually have a version of Mage Knight that we play as a tactical way of experiencing RPGs, like pen and paper RPGs that we play. We actually can incorporate Mage Knight into those games. And we have all these rules for that. So we can actually do that on the virtual table, which is a real, really good, but we can't do it in highly scripted mods because, you know, it's just all, it's all automated. So I wanted this mod to appeal to me and the way I like to use Tabletop Simulator, but I also wanted it to be more available to, you know, the, the, the variant scene. And that's pretty much it. Oh, there's one thing I forgot. Oh well, I hope no one <laughs> no one worries about this because not many people are going to get to the end here. But if you you just flip this thing over to get the different uh, things. So if you're playing on a B side, it goes here. If you're playing on an A side, it goes here. Okay, well that's it. Uh, you've got all the token references here, just like before. You've got the resistance tables here, scoring cards. And I just want to note that I took a lot of component, like when, when he made his new mod, he took all my components, which is how modding works. You share, you don't own anything. It's all owned by WizKids and the lad. But when he made his mods, he re-scanned everything from his Ultimate Edition and a beautiful new scan. So all the cards are nicely re-scanned and you know, a lot of the tokens are redone. So I've taken a lot of those improvements from his mod back into mine as well. And that's it. I hope you like it. And I'll see you guys next time.